welcome to church. Tell your parents, your guardians, the people that you are with to watch. This time is church time. Today is a beautiful Sunday, the third Sunday of the month of June. What are we talking about? We are learning how to be true followers of Jesus Christ. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I know you do, because I do love Jesus. So in our today's lesson, you're going to talk about something called self-control. Do you know what self-control is? Mm, something like when you're so angry at someone and you feel like you want to punch them, but then you say, mm, pause. Are you going to hit that person? No, because that is not what God wants you to do. So in class, teacher Florence is ready and she's going to talk to us about self-control as followers of Jesus Christ. Let's listen. Thank you, teacher Annette, for the introduction. Good morning, children. So before we start our lesson for the day, let us uh, close our eyes and uh, offer a word of prayer. What do we do when we, want to, when we want to pray? When we want to pray, we put our hands together, bow our heads, close our eyes, and then we pray. Almighty God, we come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. Thank you, Jehovah, for bringing us to this house of praise. Thank you, Jehovah, for our children and their parents. I pray that you may continue blessing us and protecting us, especially around this time when we're going through a hard, a hard period of corona. I pray that, Lord, you may be with us and you may protect us all. As we start this lesson, Jehovah, be with us, guide us, and please speak to us. We pray this believing and trusting God's children say, Amen. So, children... I welcome you to this service today. And before we go to the word, let us start with the song. And today we are going to do a praise and worship song that is called uh, Goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you very much, children. So today's lesson, it's about self-control. And we'll be continuing with our month's teaching of being Christ's follower. So uh, for us to, to understand the lesson of self-control, we are going to look at the book of Matthew, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 11. And the book, the chapter 1 to 11, it's about the temptation of Jesus Christ. So I will ask you, children, um, if somebody, your classmate, tells you, go home and bring me your best toy, and if you don't bring me, you will not be happy. I'll, 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 I'll do something that is not good to you. What would you do? Would you go and get your toy and give it away without even telling your parents, or you'll just say no? So today we are talking about Self-control, how do you carry yourself when people are trying to force you to do things that you really don't want to do because you know they are sinful? So we're going to start with Jesus. Uh, before, before, before Jesus was tempted by the devil, he was baptized. That is, the, that is what came before. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. You've heard about John the Baptist? You have friends who are called John. So Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And after his baptism, he went to the wilderness. The Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. In the, you know where the wilderness is? 
You know Nairobi National Park, Jesus went to a place like Nairobi National Park. And at that, in the wilderness, he stayed for 40 days and 40 nights fasting. What does that mean? Jesus went to the forest, the wilderness, where there was nobody. It's just you know, trees and rocks and plants. And then he started praying without eating or drinking anything. Right? Imagine for 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine you going without food even for a day, children? Have you ever gone for, without food for a day and you are not sick? It's tough. So when Jesus was in the wilderness, then this, the devil came. You know, he realized Jesus was so weak, he has not eaten. Then he said, this person, I'm going to get him. So what did the devil do? He came and told Jesus. So the first temptation, he told Jesus, now that you're the son of God, why don't you turn those rocks, the stones were around him, into bread? You know, like Jesus was so hungry, and then he's, he's trying to, you know, to, 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 to see how powerful Jesus is. Then what did Jesus respond? He told him, man shall not live by bread alone, but the word that comes from the mouth of God, right? And the devil felt so bad because he thought, because Jesus is so hungry, he's going to do something that I tell him to do. But Jesus, you know, he controlled himself despite the fact that he had the power to do it. He did not do it because he knew why he was in the wilderness and why he was fasting. Okay, so the devil realized, huh, let me try again. Probably if I tell him something that is more interesting or, you know, I try him more, he's going to give in. And the second temptation, what he took him, he took Jesus to the holy city and made him stand in the highest point. Can you imagine, do you, you, you know that this very tall building in Nairobi, for example, K Kenyatta International Conference Center, KICC, then you are told you stand up there and then you drop yourself down. Yes, you drop your, you throw yourself down. Since, so the, the devil took him to the holy city to the highest point and told him, since you are the son of God, throw yourself from the highest point and the Lord will send the angels to come to come and, 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 and catch you, you will not fall. Then Jesus told him, it is written, it is written, do not tempt the Lord your God, right? Do not put your Lord God into tests, right? Do not test, do not test your Lord, the Lord your God. Because he thought, maybe if I told him that, and he wants to show me how mighty he is. He's going to throw himself down and then the angels come. But you see, God doesn't like proud people and God doesn't like show-offs. Right. When you have something, you don't have to go showing off. You let God uplift you. So Jesus did not. Jesus, Jesus did not throw himself down. He told him, I mean, it's written, do not put the Lord God into test. Then... The final temptation, it was the third temptation. So the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him the city. It was so beautiful, all the beauty. You know, you've been taken to, you know, uh, a very nice city and, it, and, and the devil is showing you, look at that place, I will give it to you. Look at that place, I will give you that supermarket. I will give you that hotel. I will give you that shop. I will give you all those beautiful things in that place. So he took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world. And then the devil told, say, said to Jesus, I will give you all this if you bow down to me. Right, children? You see how the devil is tempting, is tempting, is tempting Jesus. So, I mean, imagine if you're shown all that. What would you do, children? If you're told, I will give you the whole of Nairobi, all those beautiful play, play areas, the, 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 the swings with swings, with slides and everything. Would you say, now it's okay, I will bow down before the devil so that I can get that? 
absolutely not. So what did Jesus say? He said, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Remember the devil is telling Jesus, you bow down to me and I will give you all that. Right? But Jesus said, no, it's written. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil felt so bad. Right? Imagine he has tried him. This is a person who has been in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He has not eaten anything. He has more power to do whatever he wants because he's the son of God. Then the devil comes with very nice things that he wants him to do. But then Jesus says, no, right? So what is that, children? That is self-control, right? Do we understand what self-control is? You know, put it, you, you don't do things because you, you can do them. Sometimes you, 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 you don't do things that you've been forced to because you know it's the best thing, it's the right thing to do. So Jesus did not do all that. So what did the devil do? Because he was so annoyed and so disappointed, he went away, right? He went away. And when he went away, you know what happened? The Lord sent the angels who came and took good care of Jesus, and he was okay. Just imagine, children, if Jesus gave in to the devil, what will have happened? We've, we've, we, we know how the devil is bad and he's cunning, and we know he's the one who is in hell, right? So Jesus will also have gone to hell or, hell, or what? Yes? So what we've learned today is it's important to have self-control, and self-control is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Children, are we together? So next time when somebody tries to put you up to do something that you know is wrong, please do not do it. All right? Do not do it because God wants people to do the right thing. Okay, children? And uh, with that, I will call upon uh, Ivana and Hazel to give us a memory verse and a song. Ivana and Hazel, welcome, children. My name is Ivana Kairioki. My name is Hazel Wairimu Kairioki. And we have a memory verse and a song. Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your heart then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. He's pleasing, his good pleasing and his perfect will. The title of our song is Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. What to do is his will. He'll abide with us still. And to those who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ivana and Hazel. God bless you. The Ivana and Hazel have, have sung the song, Trust and Obey. You have to trust in God, right? Jesus, you know, he was not, he was not uh, afraid that bad things will happen to him even if he stays hungry for 40 days and 40 days because he knew God will take care of him and he obeyed the commandments of God, all right? So with that, children... We are going to close with a word of prayer, like we always do. When we want to pray, what do we do? We put our hearts, hands together, bow our head, and then we close our eyes. Lord, we come before you again with thanksgiving in our heart. Thank you, Lord, for the word, oh dear Father, that you taught us today, oh dear Father, that, Lord, it's important, oh dear Father, 
to have self-control. Lord, you took care of Jesus in the wilderness, and even in this wilderness we are going through of corona, dear Father, I know that, Lord, you're going to carry us through. If only we trust in you and we obey in you, we obey you, Jehovah, and we follow your word to the letter. Thank you, Father, for these children who are together with us this, this, this morning, who are listening to the word. May you bless them, may you bless their family, bless their parents, their guardians, and everyone who's called together with them. As we end this service, Lord, be with us, protect us, and guide us. We pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, children. See you next Sunday.